In the last video, I issued a challenge to see if you could figure out how to make a robot drive a precise distance. Before you get started, make sure that the encoder cables are plugged in with the colors facing the correct way into the motor controller. The steps to programming the encoders to make it drive a particular distance are the same steps that you would use uh, to program an arm to act like a servo. I'm not going to do anything special with my hardware code. I'm just going to create and map my motors. I'm even going to say that they're going to run without an encoder. All right, now here's my autonomous mode. Just a generic autonomous mode where I initialize my robot and have it drive forward for half a second. I want to replace that so that it drives forward exactly 18 inches. So the code right here is going to have to change. The first piece that I'm going to add to the code is an integer. It's going to hold the number of motor tick counts. That number is 1,120 in the case of this motor. You would have to look up how many tick counts it takes for your motor to make a full rotation. Now let's go back and look at the steps that we need to program in to make the robot drive a particular distance. The first thing we need to do is figure out the tick count. And to do that, we're going to have to find the circumference of the wheel so that we know how many times the motor needs to turn the wheel. In this case, I'm measuring my wheel, and it comes out that it's about 2 and 938 thousandths. Before we do that math, let's reset the encoders so they're starting at zero before we forget. So we're going to set the mode for each of the motors that are driving to stop and reset encoder. Now we have to figure out how many times does the motor have to turn the wheels so that we can go the correct distance of 18 inches. To figure that out, we're going to have to find the circumference of the wheel so that we know how far it goes when it turns once. So I'm going to create a variable called double, which handles decimals, and call that circumference. I'm going to set that equal to, to pi, which is 3 and 14 hundredths times the diameter of the circle. Now I need to find the number of rotations. So I create a variable for number of rotations needed. And that's going to be equal to the number of inches, 18, divided by the circumference. That's going to tell us how many times the wheel needs to turn. Now, the numbers we've been working with to this point have been uh, decimals, doubles, and encoder counts need to be integers. So I'm going to cast this to an integer, and I'm going to say the number of rotations needed is each one of those is going to be the certain number of motor uh, tick counts, multiply that by the number of tick counts. In this case, that's 1,120, or I could have multiplied times my variable that I created. Now, because I reset the encoders, I know they're already at zero, so I don't need to do anything fancy. I can just set the target positions for the two motors to the encoder driving target that I created. If I didn't uh, reset them, then I would have to add that encoder driving target onto whatever the current position is. Now we can set the powers. That could be half or one. I think that it's going to be more accurate if the robot doesn't drive too quickly and slide. Then we need to tell the motors to run to that target, to run to that position. So we're going to set the mode on those motors to run to position. Finally, we need to know when the motors have finished moving to that position. So we're going to use a while loop to check to see if the motors are busy. And if they're busy, we're just going to wait or print something to the screen. Instead of actually doing nothing, I'm going to use telemetry code inside of this. And I'm going to print that to the phone so that I can 
debug if I need to in the future. So it's going to print to the screen what is happening. Finally, when the motors have finished moving and they're no longer busy, they're going to the program is going to leave the loop. And we're going to go down and we're going to stop the motors, give them a power of zero, because we've already gotten to the correct destination. All right, download it. Let's give it a try. Pretty close and much easier than trying to program for just time or changing the power.